It's a pretty big hassle moving around the shop vac and the separator anytime I want to use dust collection with power tools. So this week I made this card to turn these two units into one and try to simplify the process. If you're new to the hobby, then a quick overview for you is breathing in dust is bad. One way to control it is to hook up a shop vacuum directly to your tool when you're using it. This sends all of the dust through the filter of the shop vac and the shop vac collects it. A great add-on to the setup is a cyclone or separator. I have the dust rate separator where I hook up a hose to my tool that feeds into the separator, then the separator feeds into the shop vac. This separator collects the majority of the sawdust that I create, leaving only the finer sawdust to actually go through the filter of the vac and be collected inside of the shop vac. This drastically prolongs the life of your filter. This is definitely my preferred setup. However, getting back to the irritation, it is a little bit of a hassle trying to tote around both of these things from station to workstation. So getting back to the project, I designed a card to put both of these units on to make hauling it around easier. When I first started playing with designs, I was going with a smaller vacuum. You can see that I raised the vac up so the intake would be able to go directly into the top of the separator. Then I added in drawers to that extra space at the bottom on the tall back, I figured I could hang all of my RRSs and have sandpaper storage. But then I switched the design up because I decided to go ahead and upgrade my shop back while I was building something from scratch. I'll be using a rigid 12 gallon, five horsepower wet dry vac. It's pretty much the same height as my separator, so I took out the drawers, moved my belt sanders to the left side, and my RRS sanders to the right. I left a hole above the separator for the intake and exhaust boards, then added the sandpaper storage above the vac. And this one would have worked. However, I couldn't help playing with just one more design that would be taller, but have a smaller footprint. This is an option with the unit stacked, with the hose going straight out of the vac up to the separator. I still had room for the sanders on the left and the RRSs on the right, but then broke up the sandpaper storage to go on both sides in order to make it all fit. I'm building it from one sheet of three quarter inch plywood, so I started by wheeling a sheet over to my workbench and breaking it down with my track saw. If you're interested, I do have a set of plans with a cut list and material shopping list available on my website. It drives me nuts that my arms are just a little too short to get across an entire sheet. And I don't know why, but I always think this time it's gonna be different. But of course it never is. Once I had things at a more manageable size, I took these sheets over to my table saw and broke them down to their final size. And just a tip for you, whenever I'm working off a cut list, after I cut a piece to size, I label the edge so that I won't get it mixed up with the other parts of the build. Before putting things together, I grabbed what will be the two side pieces and used a roll of tape to round off the front edge and then a jigsaw to make the cut. To start joining things together, I grab the back and one of the sides, then use the aid of these right angle clamp -it jigs to hold both together at a 90. This makes it easy to go through and pre-drill and attach for screws. Next, I flipped it on its back and attached the bottom. Oh, and I am using Titebond Original for this entire project. Next, I attached the shelf in the same manner. I first measured on where it needed to go, then made marks on the front and back on both of the side pieces. Before securing it with screws, I also used a square just to make sure that everything looked good. Once I had the two front corners pinned, I used a square to draw a line down center of the plywood shelf so that I could pre-drill and screw the back of the shelf into place. After repeating on the other side, I quickly attached four casters to the bottom to make this unit mobile, then set it on the ground to test it out. All right, let's load this thing down, shall we? Separator goes on top, shot vac on bottom. The hose as well as all of the attachments on this rigid shot vac have a quick connect feature which will make not only connecting the hose but also disconnecting it to clean out the vac quick and easy. I thought I would have to build in some holders to store the vac attachments but rigid actually incorporated a storage method in the feet so that's handy and of course saves me a step. 
Now the reason the separator is on top is because it's the portion that is connected to my power tool and I wanted to have the ability for it to pivot around along with me instead of being confined inside of that lower cubby. That's also the reason I left it on casters. Now the shop vac actually comes with these handy hose holders with the intention of giving you an onboard place to store it away when you aren't using it. However, since it isn't needed on the vac in my case, I repurposed it to hold my smaller hose from the separator instead of just tossing it inside this top compartment. And this will keep the hose conveniently placed for an easy grab and use. Now I'm not incorporating any extra hose storage on my unit because I use this Rockler small port hose kit, which is a flex hose that is a stock diameter, but comes with thread on connectors that are interchangeable and of course are different sizes. I most often pull out the shot vac and separator when I'm running one of my five sanders. And in most projects, I never just use one. I decided to place all of my sanders on this cart. So that's what I did next. Since I already built holders for these tools, it was as simple as grabbing them off my wall and placing a cleat on the side of the cart. Since I already had the holders made, I could run a piece of plywood through my table saw out of 45 in order to create a cleat that I could then place on the side wall. And this gives me a place to hang my tool holder. Now my buddy Jay Bates built a similar cart for his vacuum separator a few years ago, but he went with a much lower profile body. So if you aren't interested in all of the side storage, then I recommend checking out his plan. And that, there is a link for you down in the description. And that's the unit with all of the tools on it. Belt sanders on one side and the RS is on the other. Now to make some sandpaper holders. I started off with a piece of three quarter inch ply that was wide enough to make up both of my sides. Changed out my regular blade for a dado stack that's a quarter inch in my case. After getting all of those cut, I could then change my blade back to 90 and cut this board directly down the middle in order to create the two sides needed. With the body of both done, now it's as simple as grabbing some quarter inch material. And since I'm using scrap, I picked up plywood for one and MDF for the other. Cut it to size and then glued it in place. I went ahead and stuck both of mine in clamps instead of using brad nails, just so I wouldn't have to worry about blowing out through the, through the shelves. After that was dry, I did a little bit of clean of work using my belt sander, and then I started hanging the units. Now for these, you can put it on the French cleat as well, but I ended up using a few pocket holes drilled into the side just to keep it from pushing off of the unit another three quarters of an inch. And I was actually ready to call it done when I stumbled across a sandpaper cutter that Rockler produces. And I just thought this thing was way too cool. So I went ahead and put in a few screws and stuck it on the side of the unit with my flat paper. Now whenever I have a sheet of paper and I want to tear it into the size for my sanding blocks, all I have to do is stick it into the holder, line up the left side of the sandpaper to the depth gauge on the cutter, and then just rip it. And then the last thing I did was include a power strip. I originally wasn't going to. I was just going to drill a hole in the back of the unit for the plug of the shop back to pass through. However, I like the idea of plugging the power strip into my cord reel, then being able to plug any of my sanders into this power strip instead of also having to run them to my cord reel. So main power comes in here, then I have plenty of outlets to run the tools that are being used with the shop vac cart. This card definitely simplifies moving both of these units around. Now don't forget that I do have a set of plans if you would like to build your own. And I've also linked to Jay Bates if you would just like some design inspiration. That's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed yourself. I hope that it helped somebody. And I'll see you on the next build. What do you think, Totem? Jump. Good boy. Say hi, Totem. Over there, say hi to him. No, you don't want to be social. <laughs>